It is with deep sadness that we note the death of His Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Her Majesty the Queen and all the Royal Family are in our thoughts and prayers at this time. As Rector and on behalf of the Select Vestry, I wish to express our sincere sympathy to Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family and assure them of our loyal support and steadfast prayers. We take a moment to remember before God, our dear brother Philip, and to give thanks for his life. Blessed are you, Lord our God, lover of all souls. You uphold us in life and sustain us in death. To you be glory and praise forever. For the darkness of this age is passing away as Christ the bright and morning star brings his saints the light of life. As you give light to those in darkness, who walk in the shadow of death. So we remember your faithful servant, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, that he has passed through the gate of death into eternal life and to unending fellowship with you, where with your saints you live and reign, one in the perfect union of love, peace and harmony forever. Amen. We pray for Her Majesty, the Queen, and all members of the Royal Family. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and the Royal Family, the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your goodness in past years and waiting in that joyful expectation of eternal life with thy servant Philip, who has gone before them. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.
collect for the second Sunday of Easter, let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, even Aaron's head, running down upon the collar of his clothing. It is like the dew of Hermon, running down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has promised his blessing, even life for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever, world without end. Amen. A reading from Philippians chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crime, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Judea and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have laboured side by side with me in the good news together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the first half of the 17th century, the German Lutheran Rupertus Meldinus wrote, In essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. 
He wrote these words in the context of the Thirty Years' War of Religion, which was tearing Europe apart. His words were a cry for unity, a cry for common sense to prevail, a cry for a listening ear rather than a wagging tongue. His words were very necessary in the 17th century uh, when Europe was divided in terms of war, nationality and politics. And they have remained relevant throughout every generation, including today's generation, and will continue to do so on into the future. Because it is a sad reflection of humanity that we fall out and are divided across various lines. We can fall out in terms of religion, in terms of politics, in terms of sexuality and morality, in terms of class division and in terms of ideologies. The call and cry of Mildinus was to find unity in essentials. And this cry and call for unity is something that goes back to ancient times. In the Bible, we have the book of Psalms. And in Psalm 133, we hear a call for unity from the psalmist. The psalmist writes, Behold how good and pleasant it is to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, even on Aaron's beard, running down upon the collar of his clothing. It is like the dew of Hermon, running down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has promised his blessing, even life for evermore. The psalm begins with a situation, proceeds to a double comparison, and ends with a certain blessing. In verse 1, unity is emphasised, dwell together and in unity. This is objectively good and subjectively pleasant, but it is much more. It prompts a heavenly response of unstinting abundance by which the Lord consecrates his people to be his priests, fulfilling his own express desire for them. Moreover, it is a heavenly miracle, eradicating divisions and bringing Hermon, the chief mountain of Israel, and Zion, the chief mountain of Judah, together in divine life-giving Jew. Consequently, there the Lord has commanded forevermore the blessing of life. Sometimes we forget that the children of Israel were divided. There were two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And throughout the Bible, there is division and difference. And yet in the midst of this division and difference, there is a better path to walk down. There is the path of unity. In the New Testament, we forget that the apostles and the early church were divided at times in their early existence. St Paul, writing to the Philippians, entreats Judea and Syntyche to agree in the Lord. We aren't told what had happened between the two ladies, but it seems there had been a fallout of some sorts. St Paul writes, Yes, I ask you also, true companion, to help these women who have laboured side by side with me in the good news, together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the Book of Life. This image of the Book of Life is an eschatological image. It's an image of the end times. It's an image of the heavenly place where all God's people will be gathered in perfect unity. And so St Paul is sending a clear message to Judea and to Syntyche that if there is unity in the future, then there should be unity in the present. They must do everything they can to bring about reconciliation, to put their problems in the past 
and to move forward in faith and in unity. And St Paul gives us some helpful things that bring about unity. He encourages us in life and in our human experience of life to hold on to and to fix our eyes on whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. Yes, we can be distracted by so many different things in life, but Paul points us in the direction of those things that are excellent, those things that are worthy of praise, uh, those things that build us up rather than tear us apart. And so he's encouraging us to find unity in the Lord, to find unity in God. And so his prayer of blessing is that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, would guard our hearts and minds as we walk through this journey of life together. He says, follow my example, hold on to what I have told you, and the God of peace will be with you. So as we continue to walk through life together, and let us not be a divided, but rather let us be united in the essentials of God's truth. Allow liberty in those non-essential matters where we can uh, disagree, not be disagreeable, as the Reverend Chris Wilson often says. And in all things that we experience in life, let us hold on to charity, because charity is the most precious gift of all. As St Paul writes, faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is charity. Let us pray. Lord, look we beseech thee upon the people of this land who are called after thy holy name and grant that they may ever walk worthy of their profession. Grant unto us all that laying aside our divisions, we may be united in heart and mind to bear the burdens which are laid upon us. Help us to respond to the call of our country according to our several powers. Put far from us selfish indifference to the needs of others and give us grace to fulfil our daily duties with sober diligence. Keep us from all uncharitableness in word or deed and enable us by patient continuance in well-doing to glorify thy name. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, 
we are gathered in your presence to offer to you our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins and to pray for the recovery of unity among your people and for the renewal of our common life together. Wherefore, help us to heed the words of Holy Scripture, setting forth your will and the purpose for unity. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Lord, write your word in our hearts that we may know and do your will. There is one body and one spirit, as there is also one hope, held out in God's call to each of us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Lord, write your word in our hearts, that we may know and do your will. For Christ is like a single body, with its many limbs and organs, which many as they are, together make up one body. For indeed we were all brought into one body by baptism in one spirit, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, whether we are slaves or free men, that one Holy Spirit was poured out for all of us to drink. Lord, write your word in our hearts, that we may know and do your will. But it is not for these alone that I pray, said Jesus, but for those who through their words put their faith in me. May they all be one, as thy Father art in me and I in thee. So also may they be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst send me. Lord, write your word in our hearts, that we may know and do your will. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the sins by which we have hindered the recovery of unity and caused the names of fellow believers to be defamed or blasphemed. Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive us our sins. For the sins of thought, for ignorance of the faith by which our fellow believers live, for intellectual pride and isolation, for the rejection of truth which we have never tried to understand. Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive us our sins. For the sins of temper, for apathy and complacency, for prejudice and party spirit, for hasty judgment and embittered controversy. Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive us our sins. Pardon, O Lord, we pray you the sins of our past ignorance and willfulness. Uplift our hearts in love and energy and devotion, that being made clean from guilt and shame, we may go forward to serve you and your people in the newness of life. Amen. And as children of the one Heavenly Father, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and the God of peace be with you always. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed our service. Uh, we are back in St Mary's Kilmood at 10am each Sunday and at Kalinchi Parish Church at half past 11. 
If you wish to attend services, please let myself or one of the church wardens know of your intention. And if you wish to remain at home, that is okay. We are continuing with our online ministry and the distribution of CDs. God bless and stay safe.